Okay, so let's just start off with speaker introductions. Um, so Andrew and Erica, feel free to introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew. I graduated last year from Northwood. Um, I am currently at Princeton University wanting to study economics or in the School of Public and International Affairs. Um, at Northwood, I was part of Philharmonic Orchestra as well as the Howler and right now doing very similar things at Princeton with, with the Daily Princetonian and with the Symphony Orchestra. Hey guys. Or, or um, hey guys, um, I'm Erica. Um, I also graduated last year. Um, I'm part of the School of Engineering, either planning to study computer science or operational research and financial engineering. Um, also interested in pursuing a minor in Japanese language and culture. Uh, at Northwood, I was involved with CSF, Girls Who Code, um, CubeSat, and I also taught computer science outside of school. Awesome. Um, so we're just going to go on to the questions. Um, you guys can start whenever you're ready. Well, okay, so why did I apply to Princeton? So I think a better, at least question for me is why did I eventually pick Princeton? And that's primarily because of like the um, amount of student engagement that the school offers. Um, we have, I think, a faculty ratio of five students to one faculty member. And so the amount of like focus and the amount of uh, attention that the school gives you is definitely comparable to the top institutions. Um, is If you ask any Princeton student, they'll tell you that the school quite literally will throw money at you to do things like research or find internships, find opportunities um, outside the classroom. Um, it is, I think, the school with the highest endowment per student. And as a result, you have a lot of opportunities to uh, really get out into the field, try things, try research, engage with professors. And eventually, um, this all turns into great experience from what I hear. Uh, as you continue on, like, I think as you continue with high school, you'll kind of realize how much like how important your academics are at first, but also how, what you do outside that really matters in terms of you know, finding a job later or even applying to college. And yeah, and obviously the campus is beautiful, the community is great and all that other stuff. Um, I guess for me, well, both Andrew and I applied early. So clearly really, we really love Princeton. But my junior year, I actually wanted to apply early to Penn because because uh, my family was Penn Legacy. So then I was like, oh, it would be great to run in the family. But I guess same thing with Andrew, like I visited the campus and it was so beautiful, like compared to like any other school, it was so beautiful. And I was like, okay, that's a good reason to apply. Um, but aside from that, I think personally, I wanted to be able to explore different topics. Um, so the schools I really apply to are just the UCs and some IVs. And one thing about UCs is that as soon as you get in, you can only really explore within the specific school. So let's say if it's like UC Berkeley, uh, if you apply to school engineering, then you study something within the engineering. Or if you get into letters and letters of sciences, then you have to study something within the letters of sciences. Um, it's not really easy to switch between the schools within you know, like let's say UC Berkeley. So for me, I really wanted to be able to explore different fields and different interests. And I feel like Princeton was able to do that for me. Um, also the undergraduate focus is really, really emphasized here. I think like there's a lot of connection and a lot of support system that I don't think I would have gotten if it was a really large school. All right, um, I think we can group these next two questions together. So as I said earlier, um, I'm interested in majoring in economics or the Princeton School of Public and International Affairs, formerly known as the Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs, but which has now been changed to change and shortened to SPIA. And um, what are your thoughts on applying for a major that's easier to get into and transferring to another major? Um, I do see this question come up a lot and it's kind of a misconception, especially for a lot of schools. So what we have at Princeton is the BSc and the AB program. Eric is a part of BSc that's um, I believe science and engineering, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm in the AB program, which is a Bachelor of Arts. And so when you apply to a major, you're not necessarily applying to a major, you're more applying to a school, unless of course you're applying to say, like the Wharton School at Penn or any other business school, any uh, pre-med program, things like that. So it really depends on how, um, what school you're applying to and programs they've got. Um, I did apply, I did apply into Princeton as a philosophy major, primarily because 
I did some debate in high school and I also did some engagements research within the subject outside of the classroom. But I wouldn't say that this was necessarily an, a major that's easier to get into, but it was something that I um, was passionate about and therefore my essays translated and my sort of my like entire application translated around that idea. So when you say applying to a major that's easier, I'd say it's more of applying to a major that you're more comfortable with. And obviously there's a lot of opportunities to change within the college, but also depends on which school you go to because I have heard that applying into different segments or different colleges within the university is a bit difficult as well. I guess like adding on top of that, it really depends, right? Like it really depends on what kind of school you want to go to. Like, so for Princeton, so I applied computer science, Bachelor of Arts, but then as soon as I got in, I actually switched to School of Engineering. Um, but at the end, I talked to some like people at Princeton and also like a mission officer and they said there really is no difference. So it really depends on the school. Like Princeton, like even if you apply for the School of Engineering um, or school for the other school, it really doesn't make a difference. Um, but there are other schools like maybe the UCs that actually care about that. So, I mean, you can apply for a major that's easier to get into, but at the end, like, that's really just for you to be able to study that. And it's really hard to get into the harder majors, right? So like for UC Berkeley, sorry, I keep on mentioning Berkeley because I know a lot of people at Berkeley. Um, so like Berkeley, like the hard one would be to get into EECS, right? So if your dream is to get into EECS, then you better apply EECS, right? Like, unless your goal is to get into the UC Berkeley, then yeah, like, if you don't really know what your major is and you just want to get into UC Berkeley, why not like apply for the letters and sciences and there's nothing wrong with that because at the end you're taking classes and you can take whatever classes you want at that campus. Um, but also just make sure like don't apply for a major just because it's easy easy like you have to have activities to reflect that yeah you're actually interested in that major. Yeah, so like majors like I guess like the popular idea of an easy major is like marine biology or whatever but like it's not necessarily true and it's mostly up to the like it's up to like the specific college that you're applying to like I have friends who are I, I've known people who are at the main college at Penn who are also trying to apply into the business school now but obviously nothing is necessarily easier but it may be more specific which makes it seem harder to say apply or get into. So what makes up the Princeton application? Um, I believe that questions have changed this year. <laughs> um, there, I think, so I looked into it a bit. There's six questions, regardless of where you apply. They defer based, one differs based on which, um, which con sorry, not concentration, which school you apply into. But there are six supplemental questions, and I believe some more in the main application. So yeah, be sure to look into those. Um, yeah, so it's just answering questions, putting in your stats, your information, financial aid, all that. Yeah, um, I guess other than that, like, instead of what makes up, like, how do you want to stand out inside within the Princeton application? So one thing about Princeton that they really heavily emphasize is service to humanity. That's their motto, I think. So, like, thing, they really care about, like, what kind of services you're gonna do that's gonna help other people. Um, so I think those are some qualities, like if you have done activities that's related to that, emphasize those more. Um, each school have different things they look for and that's one of the things Princeton looks for. Um, also like when I worked on my Princeton application, they asked like, oh, like what's your favorite books or like what kind of, what, what else was there? Yeah, what's your favorite book? What's your favorite song? um a quote or something. right yeah yeah like what's yeah, your favorite like quote like, points, yeah. yeah like those are the things that you want to make sure it's going to be interesting sounds fun and a little bit different i think those are just things that they will read and they'll be like oh that's so interesting and they will remember more about you yeah also for that book question i think everyone writes to great gatsby because that's because f scott fitzgerald's from here so it's oh, up there <laughs> i did not do that yeah, me neither. But um, when or when did slash should you start working on applications? Um, I think I wrote like a sentence in the summer <laughs> and then put it off. 
but yeah, you should definitely start working on apps as soon as possible, I suppose, because you'll also be, I guess for most of y'all, you'll be doing um, activities in the summer that you can be writing about. And I think the culmination of, of like the most of high school that you can put into your application as possible is like your most realistic opportunity to write about yourself and to um, start working on your applications. Like things change, obviously. We've seen that this year, things change very drastically. Um, but yeah, putting off applications, I say, isn't the greatest idea, but um, try to get as much in as soon as possible, but not so soon that you miss out on something that could be really useful and could be really meaningful to you. Yeah, um, at the end, like, I'm sure you guys are like the very type of people that works hard in high school and want to make sure that you have the best shot at getting into college. So why wait until the end, right? Like, you don't want to do that. You don't want to really regret that and be like, oh, I should have put more time in. So I guess it's really up to your own judgment. If you're okay starting with like a month before the due date and you're not going to regret that, then yeah, that's fine. Um, but if you're like, I don't want to regret it. I don't want to, I want to make sure I have time to read over my essays and make sure they're in good quality, quality then you should maybe start before even school starts. So for me, I started my common app essay during the summer. Um, I had a really rough draft because I was like, it has to like show me as who I am um, the past four years in high school, but also before that, like how I grew as a person. So in order to think about those things, you're not really going to be able to do that while also doing like high school homework and everything. So I really spent the time during the summer to search myself and really show how I want to be represented within my college application. Um, so yeah, just make sure you don't regret it. <laughs> um, also tip, work on your common app essay first because that main essay can also become one of your UC essays. That's what I did, yeah. Yeah, that's a good take, especially because other essays can be re like, not, not reused, but let's say reapplied into other school's questions. There's a lot of repeating questions. Say if there's like one about how did you spend your last two or three summers? So yeah, you can definitely, um, if you write some of those more applicable essays, you have a lot more room to have fun and really explore yourself before getting into other things. So your unpaid GPA and what classes you took um, and your other stats slash extracurriculars. So at a certain point, if you're already at Northwood or within the IUSD, this idea of like a high GPA isn't exactly valuable, um, primarily because at a certain point, these colleges will see that people have um, a certain level of, like it's not expertise, a certain level of accomplishment. And so it doesn't exactly matter. You shouldn't be so stressed out about your grades that you sort of lose, lose everything else about high school. But at the same time, that's not to say that you should like slack off or anything, but definitely keeping in mind your academics and balancing out with everything you've got, um, I'd say is a really good way to both spend high school and prepare to enter college you know, Eric and I have only been uh, uh, been at school for about a couple of months online, so we wouldn't really know. But for sure, knowing how to manage your time and how to balance everything is something that you'll take with you for the rest of your life. So it's good to practice in high school. Um, my extracurriculars, as I mentioned, orchestra, um, the Howler, did a little speech and debate. Uh, I helped out with ec uh, Ethics Bowl, which means some of you may know. Um, and yeah, make, yeah. Um, so my unweighted GPA, uh, it was not a 4.0, <laughs> I'll just say that it wasn't a 4.0, um, but it was competitive enough for me to compete with other high school students. Um, what classes did I take? Um, I, I'm wondering, yeah, I mean, I was on the honors track the entire four years, but I think in terms of classes, like if you're asking for AP classes, then maybe like I took stats, physics, and bio, and then comp sci. But it really doesn't matter. Um, just take whatever classes you want to take. Like um, if you're interested in chemistry, then take chemistry. Um, if you're interested in photography, take photography photography classes. It really doesn't need to like if you're not interested in the topic, don't study it. <laughs> That's what I would say. Uh, what were your other stats? I didn't take the SAT. Um, ACT, 
uh, I took it twice. Uh, the first time I took it, I got a 27. <laughs> uh, really bad, but that was because I failed my um, reading section in ACT. I cannot take standardized testing. Uh, but then the month before I can turn in my standardized testing, I did well on my, my ACT, so then I turned that in. Uh, extracurriculars. Uh, I was pretty involved with CSF my senior year. I really enjoyed that club. Um, just really learning how to talk to like over 100 members. Um, the responsibility that comes with it is pretty fun. Um, but the one thing that I really spent my time throughout my four years was teaching computer science, um, teaching introductory, like basic um, sciences to young girls. Um, the reason behind that is because, so it may be long, the story, but I grew, grew up in Japan and then I grew up in Taiwan. And then the resources in terms of technology and computer sciences were low um, when I was living in Japan and Taiwan. And I really discovered it when I came to the States. I think the reason, well, I guess my experience from that made me realize like, oh, like I feel like people should get exposed to technology at a younger age um, because it's so important in our society nowadays. So then that was what I devoted my time into. I didn't really necessarily do a lot at Northwood campus, but that's one thing I really devoted my time to. Yeah, I think that's a great transition to this next question. What we wrote about in our essays and any tips slash advice. Um, I guess also the next question, which is how we were able to summarize everything within a few hundred words. Um, so, I'd say within my essay, it's, it's a lot of introspection in terms of you take either a story, a trait, or like a challenge, hardship, things like that. But more important than identifying what that kind of story is, is identifying what you took from it. Um, so it's like a lesson that you've gained, um, something that you can pass on to say, uh, your friends, your family, your, like your future family, I suppose. It's just things that you've learned in high school that you think may be applicable uh, later on in life. So in terms of advice, I'd say um, try to think, really think about what you, what defines you as a person. Uh, this, this, the ideas of essays that come to you aren't going to come to you when you try to force it. I remember one of my essays, essay ideas, I was playing Rocket League when it came to me, like literally doing anything, doing homework, playing video games, watching a movie. It can come at you at any time when you try to force it. You know, at least in my experience, it's a bit more difficult because you're trying to like forcibly trying to find something that you think is meaningful but the most meaningful things in my opinion are like have already been a part of you and have already happened and as a result it shouldn't take a lot of effort or like intended effort in order to figure out but rather um something that so is it, that's so inherent to you and so like so that's made such a heavy mark that you can identify it even in a situation where you're not forced to do so um, and then in only a couple hundred words, how are you able to summarize everything? Um, so what I plan, what I sort of chose to do within my application was not to summarize literally everything that I tried to think about, rather things that I think like define me, obviously. So things like music, which I've done for like, uh, uh, sorry, a, a massive amount of time for, or something like um, philosophy, which I d decided to do a bit later on in high school, but we're still able to find a lot of value in. Um, it's not necessarily everything that you've done throughout high school, but things that you can really identify that if someone were, if you were to ask someone, if you could like describe you in like three to five words, like what would those words be? What would those subjects, those adjectives, those, um, uh, those lessons be in terms of yourself as a person? Um. Let's see. I guess tips for writing, thinking of topics. So this is one thing you should not do is like not telling your parents what kind of college, oh, what colleges you're applying to. Worst mistake, don't do that. Obviously I didn't. So like Andrew, you can like not think about the topic and do something else and you'll be like, boom, I think I can write about that. Um, for me, um, so during the summer, I really had to think about an essay I had to write about. At the end, the essay should show your growth, right? And who's seen you grow? Like, like who has seen you grow throughout the years? Well, my parents have, right? 
So I just had conversations with my parents, um, uh, basically talking about my time living in Japan and living in Taiwan and living in the States. Uh, what kind of different experiences have I gone through? What have I learned from it? How have I grown as a person? Um, my parents really know about me. Um, and we just spent time together and we're like, hmm, we just talked about it. And I'm like, oh my God, I can totally talk about that. That would be such a wonderful topic to talk about. So I guess like, yeah, that's how I found my topic. Um, you can talk to your friends. If you're really close to your friends and not maybe your family members, talk to your friends, have some deep conversation. Um, and then really just be like, it's about soul searching, right? Like, you want to show your characteristics and your qualities in your essays, and I think that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, the same as Andrew, I didn't summarize everything I did in high school. Um, I really highlighted activities that was very important to me and what I would be able to continue to do maybe in college, um, what have I gained from those experiences. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like Erica's idea of essay finding a bit more. <laughs> but yeah, I, I suppose it depends on if you're more of an like an introspective person as opposed to someone who like sort of projects themselves onto other people. And I think regardless of who you are, you'll you'll find some essay or some topic that really means a lot to you. Maybe it, you already have it and that's already miles ahead of what I had at this point in time. So yeah, but also al also always just keep your options open and just keep thinking about it it um you know in your downtime your free time are college counselors slash essay editors helpful in your opinion um so i wouldn't say that a big institution slash company slash corporation that that like does this for monetary compensation is a really great option primarily um well obviously people in um within this area sort of do that and definitely i'm not knocking them for anything because yeah people have so many things that require different eyes to look at and um it's definitely not a horrible thing to do but also consider that these counselors have other people that they're looking at they're all they have other um like clients and other like families that they are considering at the same time so while they're not while they're not while they're not like entirely horrible um help pieces of um advice and help i would say that trying to find um someone who like as Erica just briefly mentioned before, like your family, your friends who really know you, try to bring out the best parts of yourself within these essays. Um, and I'd say if you really are looking for a college counselor, try to find someone or an essay editor, try to find someone who will, I suppose, I guess like just read, read it over, see if it flows well, because it's always extremely valuable to have a second, third, fourth, fifth set of eyes looking at what you've written. And to be honest, the idea of a college counselor, someone who doesn't know you to begin with, if they were to pick up your essay and read it and try to, and then if they read it for the first time and they could identify like the most important parts of who you were, that's basically equivalent to how an admissions officer reads you uh, in like, in um, the admissions like room. So as a result of that, I suppose there's some value there, but also a bit of risk involved that you will have to, I suppose, if you're considering this, um, we'll have to weigh between. But ultimately, having an extra set of eyes, I think, is extremely important. I think I haven't encountered anyone who hasn't had anyone else read them, read their other essays, especially if it's his friend, uh, an upperclassman, or anyone who's gone through the process before. Also, grammar. Um, <laughs> free. Let's see. I feel like. Okay, so when I applied to school, I didn't have a college counselor, but that's also because my parents have gone through the college process with my sister. So my family was pretty aware of like, oh, like what kind of things we have to get done. Um, so if you have an older sister that applied already and you're kind of familiar with that, you can also get your like siblings help or something. Um, I do think there are wonderful resources outside online that is free that will like look over um essays so i was part of matriculate um if you want to 
if you're interested in looking that up. Matriculate is basically, they connect you with current college students. So I connected with someone at Princeton. Um, she really went through the process with me, um, chose what kind of schools I kind of wanted to apply to. She looked over my essays to make sure they were pretty good. Um, but I think instead of college counselor, I think having people to look over your essays are pretty helpful. Um, if you cannot afford an essay editor, your teachers, your English teachers, super great. They are English teachers for a reason. <laughs> um, they will read your application for sure. Um, and if you know people in college, maybe you can send it to them and have a look at it. It's not really about getting good quality editor edits. It's about making sure that when they read it, they can understand and see that, oh yeah, that's totally you kind of thing. Um, like an encouragement to go out and spend money, especially if you don't have the financial backing to do so. People, I'd say, I'd say they, they generally don't have like that much of an advantage given that they can pay more for this. So do not worry at all about um, this issue if you are considering. Um, we can just knock out these last three questions because they're most related in the last one is how much is a tuition. So I think I got accepted. Um, all right, there's definitely, if you're applying to a school, a competitive school, there's definitely a, a lot of luck involved unless you're a complete genius of which there are a, a few at this school. I'm sorry, not a few, a lot at this school, but there's definitely a component of luck, of fortune. Um, yeah, and I think attributing a bit of that is definitely something that I am consistently doing. But also, um, this isn't really related to the question, but this idea of imposter syndrome of like why, if you're asking yourself why or how you got accepted is not really like a really healthy, um, like it's not really a healthy sort of way to go about things. Uh, you got accepted for a reason. There's obviously always a reason people like these people have been working for decades they don't make mistakes that's something that i've learned um through everyone i've met at this school um so i think so, so going back to this question why i think i got accepted probably just like the essay is a bit of the extracurriculars like i'd say my extracurriculars are pretty common newspaper or orchestra like who a lot of kids do that um especially from this area but more importantly is the essays because i'd say the essays are most important because one it's the last thing you can control before sending in your application. So you have the most control over that at the point at which you are applying. Um, and like this idea of GPA standardized tests, extracurriculars, you've already done and it's, it's all like set in stone. So basically, and at, because these like standardized scores are pretty common at a certain level um, of, of admissions, if they're not exactly important. So I'd say really finding yourself and continuing to be introspective is what helps you to get in to a lot of these institutions, but also talking it up. So a bit of luck, a bit of fortune and all that stuff. And tuition, um, it's quite a bit. Well, Princeton itself has a really generous uh, um, aid program. So it says here 2019 and 2020, it's $69,000, which is a crazy amount. But the average grant for a student for this class year was $56,000, which chalks it down to 13, thousand dollars is an average net cost of tuition. Um, so if you're wondering about that, it's all on the website, admission.princeton.edu slash cost hyphen aid. Yeah, um, I can talk more about the tuition, but um, why did I think I got accepted? Well, yeah, part of it may be luck, but I think I also gave myself a chance because I also applied early. So if you really want to go to school and you know for sure you'll attend that school, definitely apply early. Um, but I knew I wanted to apply early to Princeton because what I said before, I really want to give back to the society in a way I can. Um, so my activities reflect that. Um, I'm also just academically curious. And those are maybe qualities that Princeton was looking for. Um, but yeah, I mean, you show yourself to the, in the best way possible. And if the college likes you and think that you're a good fit for that class of that year, you pretty much have a good shot. Um, each school looks for something different. Uh, yeah, and then Princeton was specifically about service to humanity and that really fit me well. So I think the things I did in high school kind of fit that too. And they probably accept me, accepted me for that. Um, 
what do you think is the most important to pursue an admissions officer? GPA, standardized tests? Uh, not GPA, definitely not standardized tests. My AP exams, I did not get fives for anything. So don't worry, don't freak out. Um, yeah, I think I pretty much put a lot of my time into extracurriculars. So maybe that's, that may not be the most important, but it is still a pretty, like, you need to have some when you apply. Um, okay, so tuition. So tuition is obviously expensive. The reason why I, I mean, I prepared for my essays in summer is because I needed to make sure I can apply to scholarships. Um, so I applied to tons and tons of scholarships to make sure I can afford it. Um, I collected enough scholarships so that I don't have to pay for my first year. Um, and then maybe my second year and then my third and fourth year, I'm gonna still get financial aid. Like Andrew said, their financial aid is really, really generous. Um, if you think it's too low, there's something called matching. Um, you can call their financial aid officer and see whether you can match um, the financial aid so that it's a bit higher. Like, let's say you got into a different school and they gave you more financial aid. And then you can be like, hey, Princeton, like, they gave me more financial aid. How about you up your financial aid? Because I really want to go to your school. And maybe they won't, but I think um, I heard some people try that and it actually worked. So. Yeah. Um, I believe, or yeah, hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Thank you guys so much. That was amazing. So um, you can go to the next slide, Jenny. Um, so we're just gonna open it up to like the students now. So if you have any like qu clarification questions or like any other questions that we didn't have on there that you wanna ask, um, feel free to do so. We'll just give you like a minute to like put everything in the chat or like, you can also unmute if you want. Okay, so while we're, we're waiting for like other questions, I'm gonna ask a question because I definitely have some. Um, so like in terms of like when you're writing your essays, how are you, um, it, are there any like tricks per se to like make it more, make it like um, to kind of like hook them onto your essay or anything that like is like that works popularly to for, for people who get into Ivy Leagues? Cause I know that like a lot of people write like in a, like a narrative way or they do it on like a really like niche topic like how did you guys figure that out do you want to go or do you want to go okay i'll go um i didn't have any niche topic i definitely went through the narrative um there's different ways i know people who talked about really random topics and still got in but at the end those really random topics were connected to something they did. Um, so maybe their like qualities or how they grew. Um, so in general, just highlight those things. Um, who you are, represent that properly. Yeah. Yeah, there's this fear slash a will to find this really niche topic or this like really extremely personal thing that you want to talk about. But um, it's not that important to find something like that, it really depends on your interpretation of this topic or this lesson that you've taken. So if you're able to spin it in such a way that's personal, and if, if you're able to convey that personality, like, per, yeah, personality to the, um, to any reader who can just pick up your essay, then I'd say that's a much more effective and um, communicative type of solution to this, this problem, this problem with like finding a good niche essay. Um, you don't, yeah, you don't need to find like a, like, like a, like a single pen that describes your entire life. Like it's not something that every student does and they don't have to do that at all. If you have an event that's meaningful to you and you understand why it's meaningful or how it plays into your personality, then that's much stronger than, you know, a pen. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, we have like another question in the chat. 
Um, so like Erica, you said you kind of had like a lot of scholarships. So do you have any tips for getting scholarships or any like places that you would recommend applying? Yeah. Um, so there are competitive ones like Coca-Cola. Um, that one's really competitive. But if you're interested in applying, I don't know, because I think the deadlines do already for seniors. But if you're a junior and interested in applying, um, definitely you can reach out to me. Um, but scholarships, they're a bit different from college application, um, I think. I feel like they're looking more for academic excellence. They will usually say. Um, so Coca-Cola may be about service to the society. So then I talked about what kind of things I did to help out my community in Irvine. Um, but there are some that are just like, oh, what kind of like academic excellence have you done? Um, then you want to highlight those things. So it really depends on the scholarship. They usually tell you like what they're looking for. Um, don't devote too much time into the competitive ones because it's really just like, if you don't get it, it's just like, oh my God, I put so much time into it. I didn't even get it. Then it's like, oops. So start with like a reasonable amount. Um, there's a lot of scholarships. What's her name? Kathy Smith. She always posts scholarship lists in Mrs. Zaleski's room. I just took screenshots of those. Um, she also sends out emails with the list. Uh, some of them are ridiculous, but some of them are pretty helpful. Uh, so just look at those lists and just see whether you can apply to those and yeah okay um awesome thank you i want to just see if we have anything else um okay yeah i think that's that's pretty much it uh, okay so we'll go on to the next slide now okay so just like some closing announcements um if you guys want to stay informed on like our next club meetings and also um, our student forum that's coming up and all of our other events, make sure you follow um, our Instagram, join our Remind and subscribe to the YouTube channel for this and many of our other forums that we're posting on there. And if you have any like personal questions, you can email us um, at our email.